Hello, Grade Tens. Today we'll be joining Tandi and Lebochang as they introduce maps, plans, and models to us. Let's join them now as they walk to Bramfontein. Are you sure you want to walk? I mean, it's just an hour before the math literacy workshop starts. Oh, come on, Bramfontein's around the corner, right there. Come. Are you saying Bramfontein is there? Oh, I man, I, I can't see. That's because we're still low on the copy. As soon as we go higher up, it'll be there. I guarantee it. This way. That's, that's Ponte City, yeah? that tall building next to the Hilbra Tower. Yeah. yeah. But it's flat, man. Umtetwa, it's round, you know, it's famous for being round. Well, that's because our point of view makes it look flat. We see in perspective. So when you look at something far away, you lose depth and you actually lose the detail in color. But if you move forward or you change the angle, you'll see it's round. No, no, I, I know, <laughs> I've been there for a party. <laughs> From a distance, buildings on the horizon can appear to be flat as if they were two-dimensional or drawn on paper. Depending on the light, the weather, and the time of day the photograph is taken, Ponte will look flatter or rounder. Of course, it also depends on how far you are from the building. As you get closer, you will see that it is round. It also helps to refer to the surroundings so that you can interpret what you are seeing. The trees in this photograph give us an understanding of depth and so our eyes can interpret the three-dimensional nature of the Ponty building behind the trees. This photograph of Ponty doesn't give us as much information about the depth because we don't have a comparison with other objects around Ponty. You know, when you're standing on top, it's like a toilet roll. Well, it would be round if you're coming from the top, of course. And if you get a helicopter ride, you'll get a great bird's eye view. That's the closest I'll ever get to that part of town. Hassan, to the other side. Check. <gasps> wait, wait, I'll hold you. Oh. Steady, steady. There we go. That's it. in tower. Tandy, come look over here. Brixton Tower. Uh -huh. First I couldn't see it, but now I can see it completely. How do you explain that? That's because your line of sight changes as you walk up the hill. And as you know, the line of sight determines what you can see. Hmm? So as you move further up the hill, your line of sight changed to include more and more of the tower, and the angle of your line of sight became larger. We also couldn't see sports fields there, you know, but now we can see them. This is surprising, eh? Exactly what I mean. Things get revealed or hidden depending on the line of sight. That massive building there is only two and a half centimeters from here. I bet you can't do that with math. <laughs> Actually, I can. It's because of perspective, and it's obvious. Things get smaller and smaller the further away you move. And in maths, we talk about the vanishing point on the horizon. And that is, things get smaller and eventually disappear the further away you move. And that's the vanishing point. <laughs> Talking about vanishing, let's vanish. Let's no. go. Oh, let's go. Mm. Yeah.
Kim Kong, are you sure this is right? Rafajin's over there. Where are you taking us? Hey, man, this map is confusing me. Oh, man. Just check your map properly. Give me that. No, but, but wait, man, I just want to check something. Okay. If I look this way from Brixton Tower to Hilbert Towers, on my sight line is... So Bramfontein should be over there. Wow. <laughs> look at this tower. You can see the curve and how high it is. Now, if I, if I had to draw it from where we were versus here, it would look totally different. Of course. That's why architects draw buildings from all different angles, so you have the whole picture. Their drawings are called elevations, which are different views from different sides. It's their specialty. We visited Kate Otten Architects, where we spoke to Adele Delange about how elevations are drawn. In architecture, we don't speak of a top elevation, but it's called a plan. And what you are doing, you, you actually see the building from, from above it, floating at one meters high. Uh, if I were to cut this building um, all the way down to one meter above the ground level, this is the kind of thing that we would be seeing. It would be actually walls that are cut from, you're looking down into the wall, you're looking down onto the floor. So everything is in what we call section, and that is a plan. The whole point of the drawing is, is to make other people understand what, what we are, our intention of building is. At the first reason is for that client to understand what kind of building they're going to get. And the spatial understanding of how a building works has to be simplified in drawings. So we use mathematical little geometries basically to explain what a real thing is going to be like. And then the second thing that's very important is for the builder to understand what he's actually going to do. So we use um, different scales of a drawing to explain various parts and various details. If you want to explain something very complicated, it has to be a very big scale, almost real life. But when you just want to show someone what a building looks like, it becomes very small. So it's just an impression of what you'll actually see when you're standing outside the building. What is Adele the architect talking about? If you haven't been to Monte Casino in Johannesburg, you may have heard about it. It was built a few years ago based on the architectural style of Monte Casino in Italy. This is the plan for Monte Casino. In mathematics, we would call this an aerial view, a bird's eye view or a top view. As Karen said, it is what you would see if you were floating above Monte Cassino or flying in a helicopter. The scale used here is a fairly small one. We can't see the detail of the buildings, but we get a good impression of how it is all laid out. On this view, one centimeter represents about half a kilometer. Do you remember how to write this as a scale? The scale on a map is written as a ratio, but the units of measurement used must be the same. If we convert half a kilometer to meters, we'll get 500 meters. One meter is 100 centimeters. So half a kilometer will be 500 times a hundred, which is 50,000 centimeters. So the scale drawing of Monte Cassino has a scale of one to 50,000 written as a ratio. Every one centimeter on the drawing represents 50,000 centimeters on the ground. Here is a scale drawing of a house. This drawing shows us the detail inside the house, even the furniture, the kitchen stove, the toilet, and the bath. The scale of this will be far bigger than the scale of the Monte Cassino drawing. The scale on this drawing is one to a hundred, so the numbers used are smaller, but this means that one centimeter on the drawing represents a far smaller number of centimeters on the ground. So the drawing will show everything bigger and more detailed. In this drawing, 100 centimeters is a meter. So one centimeter represents one meter. 
We find that in, in our field that we work in, people struggle to understand the relationships between what they're seeing on a page and what, what they're actually um, seeing in real life. And it's also simple. And uh, using maths to explain that is, the, is actually such a good idea, and, and especially for, for young people to get to understand how these things work, because you are going to have to deal with it um, in the rest of for the rest of your life you are going to buy a house you are going to work in an office space you're going to rent an office space and you've got to understand how these spaces work and if you see something on a plan is it something that you like you'll enjoy this is hillbro not romfontein yeah, the city looks different on the map. Yeah, this is Hilbro. Yeah, I know that. Ah, yeah, it's Ponte City. <laughs> you see that? It's round for you. And this perspective thing is very interesting. What has all this got to do with mathematical literacy? You might be asking yourself. Well, lots. It's about point of view, different views of objects, scale drawings, and perspective. Here is a floor plan for a school. Have a good look at it. Can you find the computer lab? Can you find the stage? And do you see the gymnasium? There are several clues that tell us what kind of a school this most probably is. Firstly, it has a very big gym. That makes us suspect that it is not a South African school. It is possibly an American school. It also has an art room, a media center, a choir room, and a computer lab. These all suggest that it is a well-resourced school. The range of subjects probably means that it is a high school. After watching this video, you could also go and ask your principal for the plans of your school. You will find it very interesting to see your own school represented in a scale drawing. In order to get a sense of how the whole building looks, architects will put several views together. In this scale drawing of a house, we can see the side view, the front view, and the top view. Now let's have some fun. Here is a pencil sharpener. If you look at it from a top view, what would you draw? You should get a drawing that looks something like this. Have a look at this view. Try to work out what the object is and what kind of a view it is. Is it a top view? Is it a side view or a front view? Well, it could be all sorts of things. The drawing doesn't give you many clues. But this is what it is the top view of a pepper grinder. Here are two views of the same object, a side view and a top view. Can you guess what the object is? Again, it is difficult to see what it might be as there aren't many clues. Does it help if you are given the front view as well? I'm sure you guess that that is a ladder. So far, we've talked a lot about different views of objects or scale drawings. Another important aspect of drawing that architects need to consider is perspective. Have a look at this photograph. The girl on the swing is closer to us and the girl pushing her is further away. Let me measure their sizes in the photograph with a ruler. The girl on the swing is about five centimeters long from the top of her head to the seat of the swing. The girl pushing her is about half that size, about two and a half centimeters high. Does this mean that the second girl is half the size of the swinging girl in real life? Of course not. So why is she so much shorter in the photograph? It is because she is further away from the camera. Photographs portray a picture as the eye sees it in perspective. If we want to draw a picture that looks as realistic as a photograph, we need to follow the rules of perspective. Let's look at another famous example of perspective. Here is a picture of the Taj Mahal, as you would see it if you were standing directly in front of it. Let your eye follow the two edges of the water. 
As you get nearer to the Taj Mahal, the two edges get closer to each other. At least it looks like they do. But in fact, they are parallel lines and they don't meet. It only appears as if they do. As the lines move further from the viewer, they only appear to be closer to each other. It seems as if they will eventually meet, but in reality, they remain parallel. The point where they appear to meet is called the vanishing point. But parallel lines never converge. But when we look at the picture, it looks like they do. This is because all objects in a perspective drawing tend to the vanishing point as they get further away from the viewer. Here is a drawing of a wooden block. If I view it at this angle, then I can extend its lines like this. The lines converge at the vanishing point. The important thing is the vanishing point does not remain fixed. It depends on where the observer is standing. Now, let me show you how easy it is to draw a block in perspective. I'll start by drawing a horizontal line to represent the horizon. Then, I place the block in front of me and view it from the front view, directly in front of me. Draw the front face of the block. These two lines of the block must be drawn parallel to the horizon. Now, use a ruler and join each of the front corners of the block to a point on the horizon. The point to which the lines will all be drawn as they move towards the horizon will be the vanishing point. Here it is. Now you just need to add in lines to show where the block ends. These lines will be parallel to the front face of the block. Wow! All right! Yeah, Jobek looks exactly like on the map. From where we're standing on top of the copy and even where we stopped, we couldn't see half of this. Mm. Like you said, there's so much exposed and there's so much hidden, depending on where you're looking from. Well, that brings us to the end of this lesson. It's good to see how our viewpoints change the way we see objects. Thank you for joining us, Great Tens. Remember to look at the task for this section in the Maps, Plans and Models task video. You will also be able to learn more on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.